when do you feel the most protected and cared for? When you just sit there and listen to me. Mm. I have always been able to come to you and let you know what I'm going through and just be extremely transparent. And you never judge me. You never look at me as being weak. Um, in the moments I just need to vent without you telling me what I need to do, you're there to just listen. In the moments that I need some motivation, that I need a different perspective, you're there to share it with me. And if we have a disagreement later down the road, you don't throw that vulnerability back in my face. Mm -hmm. So those are the times I feel most protected when I can come to you and share what I'm going through on the inside and, and you don't beat me up over it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I love that for you. to see him eating the meal that I cooked. I love seeing him sleep easy. Like every night, like clockwork, I scratch this man's back to sleep. And I know when he's asleep because I can tell when his breathing changes. And some people might think that's psychotic, but that's like, I just know that's when I'm like, oh, I can stop now. But I find joy in being your rest. And it shouldn't be conditional. A part of that lack of conditions, too, means that you do your duty joyfully regardless of yes. what's being done for you. That's it. I do my duty joyfully regardless of what is happening to and for me. You know, now some days I might be more cheerful than others because I have my own stuff going on. You know, and there's times where it's like I don't even want to say what's going on with me because, again, I know how to deal with me and my pain. You know, I'll cry in the shower and keep it moving, you know. But in the art of submission for me, because I can't speak for everybody, is being joyful about it. You know, it that want of and I think it, not even just a want, the power of knowing that you you have the power to make someone's day better. And that's a choice and easier. Yes. Better and easier. That's a choice that you have to make. I always make the choice to do it. I always make the choice to do it. I, I like to give. I like to allow my person to lead. They know, especially like when it translates in the bedroom, I like to feel dominated if I'm comfortable and if I trust you. So just know what that means. Know that dance with your partner. This gives new meaning to being locked in. There's nothing wrong with having a healthy relationship and realizing that you have a healthy relationship and going above and beyond for your relationship, knowing it's going to be reciprocated. It really is a beautiful thing to let go and let everything just flow like a beautiful river down a stream. recommend you listen to this video this is not going to be easy to hear it is not now i'm going to hold your hand truly while i tell you this it is you because it becomes a choice to be mad to react to things it becomes a choice to look for things to be mad about it becomes a choice to, to if you whether or not you want to let the past create your future it is a choice now, this is what changed my perception on love. This is what stopped me. I don't I don't look for things to be mad about. I don't want to know anything about your past. I don't want to know anything. Like, I'm going to be oblivious to everything you've ever done before me. Because you know what? That does not matter. I want to love you. I want to learn who you are. Now, what changed my perception 
was understanding how hard it is to be in a loving experience. How rare, as much as you may see it, how rare it is to truly feel loved. How rare it is to be in love. We take it for granted all the time. Now, would you rather spend years, months, however long you're with this person, arguing? That sounds ridiculous. Why would you take something so beautiful and take it for granted? A lot of people, without realizing it, ruin it ourselves. We make our own thoughts a reality. We we ride off of what we think. We sit there and we're like, oh, you know what? Maybe they were like this with this person, this with this person, and past this, and oh, follow this and that, that. Who cares? If you love somebody, love them. Te amo, mi amor. Y gracias por ser mi compañero. Gracias por soportarme. Gracias por respetarnos. Gracias, mi amor. Te amo. Y si tuviera que hacerlo de nuevo, lo volvería a hacer. Yo, este, lo que puedo decirle es. que tú eres el amor de mi vida que yo no sé que yo haría sin ti desde el día en que te conocí yo he sido la persona más feliz del mundo y yo te valoro tanto que yo pienso que quizás tú no sabes lo mucho que yo te amo porque El amor como el tuyo, yo sé que nadie me lo había podido dar. I don't know too much Spanish, but thanking one another, sharing their lives and appreciating each other over the years, it's a beautiful thing. Anybody and everybody can have it, but it just comes down to, do you want it? Yeah, there's going to be ups and downs, but for 100% certainty, you know you got somebody there with you. This is beautiful healthiness. Everybody should strive to have something like this. It's beautiful. See this? So let me ask y'all a question, right? How long have you guys been married? 60 years. How long? 60. And what's kept y'all married this long? She got good pussy. She what? She got good pussy. <laughs> Come on, old head. You didn't have to say that. I'm sure it's more than just good nana, man. There's nothing like having structure, stability, and somebody there in your corner. 24 7 for eternity you know i mean that's what basically life is about you know unionship growing learning loving and creating duplicating and even though love can come in all type of different languages and different feels and volumes and you know textures it's still love you know there's no blueprint on love it can even come like this, very direct, forward, and aggressive. <laughs> My wife and I made a decision when we got married 27 years ago that we would never mention divorce, use the word divorce, joke about it. It never, it's not an option for us. Where I have friends who in company, mixed company would say, yeah, my wife would divorce me if I did this. We don't make those jokes because we know that's not an option. So we burn the ship, we burn the ships. They were not, that option is not on the table for us. So when we have fights, which we do, like when we get upset with each other, we make sure that that isn't, that is not an option. We got to make this work. This is where they're, we're ride or die. Do y'all think healthy relationships get boring? Like, 
you you're in a good relationship with a guy and you're enjoying your time or a girl, it doesn't matter. Like you enjoy who you're with, you're enjoying your time, and then all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but the fact that the routine is so good, does it get like boring? Like, damn, we need like okay, some type please, of discourse. So, like, like, oh, I need your, to yell at your him. relationship is healthy. Okay, so please, very okay. So yeah, this is it's I think this really healthy. is the question for me. <laughs> so yes, I do have relation. I mean, a healthy relationship, but me personally, as a person, I don't know if it's a Gemini thing. I don't know if it's me, but like. I like consistency does not work for me. Like I'm mm-hmm. very sporadic. Like one minute I could do this and next minute I need to do that. Like a schedule does not work for me. So I can't get bored. Mm-hmm. If you cannot fulfill like that excitement in my life, I will get bored. Mm-hmm. I love my healthy relationship, but it's like, if we do the same schedule, I will get bored. Like that's how I be. Y'all see it when I do it with hair. I'd be like, one minute I'd be like, I don't want to do yeah. no hair no more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to do this. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I'm gonna go into my other hobby, but it's like, or she might do too much of one style. And be like, yeah. I'm sick of this. Literally, <laughs> I'm like not I cannot. Doing it no more. <laughs> yeah. I cannot do the same thing. That's literally why everybody was like, "How did you do college and college school at the same time?" Because yeah, I got was bored. Too much for me. I kept going to work and doing school at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Let's add some, else, add some else to the thing." And that's how it was with the relationship. You have to keep it up. We got to go out of town. Yeah, we got to be a little free. We got to do something new in the yeah, bed. Something right, got to yeah. be. It's definitely gonna be different for everybody. But as long as it fits your criteria and it's nothing that, you know, makes you uncomfortable or whatever, you know, sky's the limit. Ride it out. If you want an exciting, lovely relationship, it's there. It's out there. Just you got to find the right person to match that energy. But her understanding that, you know, what she needs in her relationship, and I'm sure uh, the man understands what he needs in a relationship. It just, it fits. What doesn't fit is if, you know, you know what you need in a relationship and you're trying to conform somebody to your lifestyle. That's when things, you know, fall apart. This is why communication and all that is very important at the early stages. But again, her having the awareness, right? But not blaming him for her not being entertained or her not being like she took it upon herself to put more on her plate that has nothing to do with him. She just needs to fulfill her own needs of not getting bored so easily, but she's not blaming him for her being bored, which I do see quite a bit is somebody would say, Oh, he was boring. Oh, she wasn't, you know, exciting enough. No, you just need, a certain thing on your plate to excite your life. But again, love is all type of volumes. If you're in a healthy relationship with a man, can you stitch this video and talk about- I am in a healthy relationship with the black man of my dreams. He is kind, he is enterprising, he is generous, he is faithful. And most importantly, he is my very best friend, period. Successful relationships can be described as just that. That's your boring best friend. The key to staying in a healthy relationship is find someone that likes you. Not the show you put on, not the part that you use to attract other people, but someone who genuinely likes you. Someone who you can sit on the floor with crisscross applesauce, laugh until your eyes are tearing up, and have that same person also be the person to console you during your very worst days. I think in the beginning of a relationship, really prioritize romance and courtship and dating and vacations and flashiness but the best most long sustaining relationships the most long-term relationships that i know are people that have wonderful companionship their partner is reliable they're loyal they're supportive i am my partner's comfort i am my partner's peace i am my partner's number one fan and vice versa
for a second? Wait, what's that? I know you have plans with your friends later, and when you told me that, it kind of hurt. I haven't had very much quality time this week, and I really miss spending time with you. And it hurt? I'm I sorry. did, and I know that you barely see your friends either, but this week has been especially busy for both of us, and I would really love if we could spend some time this weekend. You don't have to cancel your plans or anything. I might get short. I'll just hang out with them for a little bit, and then come right back. We can spend some time together. I really appreciate that. Look at the communication on that, man. That's beautiful, right? That's that's healthy right there, is when you can communicate instead of yell or demand or, you know what I'm saying? Bring chaos. Because this, you know, these people will be married and together forever because it's good, healthy relationship. Their obstacles will be forever, you know, communicated in a healthy way that allows them to progress together and not as individuals. Take note, because this is beautiful. If you are in a healthy relationship, but y'all are just outgrowing each other, stay in the relationship. If you're in a healthy relationship, but you just feel bored and you're looking for a spark and you feel like something is missing, stay in that relationship. If you're in a healthy relationship, but y'all struggling with communication, y'all are growing, y'all are evolving, y'all are figuring it out, go to therapy, but stay in that motherfucking relationship. Because there ain't nothing in these streets but audacity and disappointment. <laughs> you think you're going to come outside that marriage or that relationship and find something better? Baby, that's sales. Sales is different from operations, baby. Because the way these streets is ghetto, filled with men asking, what do you bring to the table? Filled with women who are, are only looking to go dig. Filled with people who are looking to be the prize, but nobody actually is the prize because all these motherfuckers ain't even done no work, no healing, no depth. Stay in your relationship. <laughs> I command you. <laughs> Don't come out here. I beg you. Take it from me, baby. I've been I've been single for a long time. I'm not anymore. But when I say the 20s outweigh the 80s, if you get outside that marriage or that healthy relationship you've been in just because you're bored, just because you think you're going to be doing better when you're single, baby, first of all, inflation is crazy. You're telling me you want to pay rent on your own? You telling me you want to go go find a man who feels like he's the prize? <laughs> you telling me you looking for a woman who's on her sprinkle, sprinkle, share a seven? You better stay with that woman. Stay. Don't come out here. It's ghetto. I feel like this isn't talked about enough, but today I want to talk about it. I think one of the hardest things to do and adapt to is going from a toxic, unhealthy relationship and then finally finding that healthy one. All that trauma that you have dealt with and have worked so hard to heal from and then getting into a healthy relationship, you were only hoping that that person's gonna do the same because that's what you have been so used to. And the triggers, let me tell y'all, the triggers is the hardest thing to get over because one day you're just waiting for that surprise. You're waiting for that person to fuck up and sometimes not everybody's meant to come into our lives to hurt us. The triggers are so hard to get over and overcome. But let me tell you something. The mind is very tricky, but the heart never lies. So whatever you're feeling in your heart, go with that. But most importantly, always trust your gut. I can say, honestly, I've had so many triggers in my relationship already. And most of them have to do with just trusting not only myself, but the person. And just hoping that they aren't going to do the same thing. And when you have been through such unhealthy relationships, you will test your partner. You will test them to the point to where they could potentially even leave. I have done this in this relationship. The only thing that is so amazing and healthy that he is willing to work with me. He's always wanting to understand why I feel the way I feel, where those triggers are coming from, and just wanting to understand me. With somebody who has been through so much trauma where their trust has been completely destroyed you have to be patient triggers are going to come up in relationships they're meant to that's the only way you are going to be able to heal them arms or your ankles or any part of your body so you said that's your personal space
If you made it this far, I just want to showcase what love in the different variations is, no matter race, no matter, you know, size, no matter, because it is out there. You can have healthy, but I think with all the chaos going on in the gender war, a lot of people forget the simplicities of why we're here and you forget what healthy relationship looks like what it sounds like so i wanted to just put this together as a reminder so whatever you have to do save this spread the message send it to somebody that probably needs it and just enjoy life in every facet take your hands off of the steering wheel you don't need to control every aspect just let it flow if it's for you it'll be for you if it's not for you it's okay. Learning lesson. We pick up the pieces and we move, but we don't take the baggage with us, right? Forgive yourself for being naive and thinking that the person had the best interest for you. Listen to the cues on if the person is telling the truth or not, right? It is all about healthiness going forward. But I'll continue to bring awareness and letting you know what's going on around you because to start doing better in life, you have to be able to recognize and have awareness and know how to navigate, right? Because again, like the channel slogan is, we don't navigate life. Life is simple. We navigate people. And if you understand how to navigate people, you will get greater results in life. And that is in relationship, that is in business, that is in every facet that you want to get into, right? Small, medium, large. And it's all about having the awareness and recognizing what you are up against. It's not about what's trendy. It's not about what everybody else is doing. It is all about your happiness as an individual. It is all about what you can gain from the situation as well as your future partner it is all about the growth and the betterment of you but for now you guys take care i hope this video served its purpose be sure to like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video
Thank you. 